while I was in the Marshalls, I actually came to Palau for work um, and met some of the local clam farming guys who were actually interested in in setting up something to do with clams at that point. But I didn't really know what. I just came to investigate and to try and buy some brood stock. Actually, I was trying to get some crocea, uh, Tridacna crocea brood stock to because they're in the Marshalls, but not the colors and the and the varieties that we could get here. So we were going to try and spawn them over there, which at the time was considered okay. Uh, these days, I'm not so sure genetically speaking um but anyway we, we were working on that at the time and i i came here and i was just blown away by palau like i, I love the marshall islands but it, it is a small place and if you're not from there you don't have the family support that, that the locals do so it, it does make it more challenging i think to, to to live there um and you know also not not being from there you know everybody gets if you stay on an island too long you get a little bit tropo you get a little bit a little bit a little bit you know your things that would never have mattered to you in in the in the big world. All of a sudden, there's huge dramas about little things, and you, you, you do learn to identify that. And okay, I got to take a week off, or you know, you got to vent somehow and and, and yeah. moderate that. And it, it is an issue. It is a real thing. Um, however, yeah. you know, in Palau, it's very different because it, it is so much bigger as as an island. But there's also just a lot more going on community-wise. There's a lot more options for right. travel. Uh, there's a much broader, a broader diversity of, of uh, expats, um, and yeah, it is a different kind of living in the Pacific. And and I, I actually yeah. brought uh, my wife and I came here for our honeymoon, and we both kind of fell in love with the the sort of mix of the lifestyle where it's still Pacific, but it it, it gave us a little more uh, access to the world and 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 you know uh, yeah. other things. Um, and yeah, we went back to Australia, had, had Maya, our daughter. And after that, uh, you know, I, I was working at the Coffs Harbour. Um, it's the National Marine Science Centre in Coffs Harbour. And I, I actually built, uh, designed and built a public aquarium on the ground level. So that's kind of was my other thing that I did as a profession and uh, loved it. You know, it was a really fun experience. I got to dive the solitary islands so much. And that's just a whole nother underwater world. I, I, I really miss that diving. Um, and it was a great project. We got to build a couple of big, like five ton tanks and then a kind of walk through uh, educational exhibit. And, you know, then we got to the end of that and I, I, I didn't want to stay in coughs and we, we relocated and I, I tried to start a few businesses and I, all it did was remind me of the struggles that I had with the first business that I started in Australia in, in 20, in 2000. And I just kept hitting these, these, uh, these brick walls, you know, as far as how Australia is set up with, with red tape and <laughs> yeah. it just got more and more frustrating. And I, I just realized like, you know, I, I grew up in a developing country and so I always had a problem with Australia and its rules. And, you know, even in America, yeah, it's the amount yeah. of paperwork and, and, and although I have no problem with good regulation, I just think it's over the top. It's at the point where it's, uh, it's, it's over-regulated almost to the point to it, like that it's just to create jobs or something is the way I saw it. So, I, you know, I, I, totally I, <laughs> I, I ended up, you know, commercial diving. So I was in the midst of uh, about as deep as you can get into the red tape as far yeah, as insurance yeah. and credentials and everything. So I was working for Chevron and remote WA and earning great money. Wow. But I was like, where's my kid? You know, I just had a kid. I, I, I had to go away for a month at a time, uh, you know, living underwater with this big commercial big helmet. helmets and everything. Yeah. And, and it, as, as, awesome as that sounds it's definitely a job that's more suited to bachelors i think you know once once you have a kid and a, and a, or even just a wife you know it's all different you don't want to yeah. be out there on the boat long and, and doing that kind of thing so yeah I, I did that and then i i tried uh starting a few businesses and had the same problems with red tape and i you know everything that i was tr that i'm interested in doing is like developing new species for the industry and that alone was like they were like red flag. Sorry, there's no law <laughs> for that species. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to develop technology yeah, to know I mean, the species. They were like, not interested, not interested. So oh, it was, it was frustrating as hell. I, 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 uh, I couldn't get around it, and, and it was going nuts. And uh, I had put in already uh, back when we visited Palau. I actually submitted a, a business application, and I'd kind of forgotten about it. To be honest, I, I'd kind of given up on the idea. Uh, and then, as I mentioned earlier, this facility became available and they contacted me out of the blue just saying, Tom, you know, we've seen your application. It was like two years later. And they just said, like, wow. we've seen your application and, and we have this facility and we're trying to get somebody in there. Are you interested? And I just realized this is it. This is my chance, you know, and I, I jumped on a plane that week and got out here and yeah, made it happen.
yeah, that's, you know, that's definitely, it's a story of uh, endurance, you know, like, uh, <laughs> um, I watch some of your, like, uh, the collections you do and stuff on, on rebreather. Mm. And, and I mean, it must, they're not only being a great experience using rebreathers, but I mean, they're obviously for what you're doing, a, a massively important tool, I would say as well. Yeah, know? it is. <laughs> uh, it's amazing that they, they, you know, I've dived all my life. I used to, when I was 16, I used to get on my bike with a scuba tank on my back and ride <laughs> down to the river and, and dive, you know, oh, in, wow. in the Tweed river. Yeah. Um, so I, that's how I would catch my fish to bring back because I yeah, didn't have options at the time or the money. So I go diving. But um, anyway, I have done it all my life open circuit. And, and then when I came to Palau, there's a couple of good friends here that were just sort of, they'd already been into it maybe a year. And I started diving with them, watching them and seeing the benefits. You know, it's, it's not just that you can, you know, so obviously by regulating your O2, you can, you can change the, um, the level of nitrogen that's going to, you know, load on your on your physical self and that's such an advantage you can extend your bottom time you know by hours and and have yeah. less deco than than people that are doing open circuit but um so that part of it is just amazing we can you know we regularly do two to you know three hour dives uh twice a day kind of thing we'll do that pretty often when we need to uh otherwise you know you double up do two two hour dives things like that but the the, the best thing for me about it as related to work is is obviously no bubbles and yeah. and it is amazing you know you just you <laughs> stop moving or just hide in a in a like just get up against the profile of a rock and just stop moving and all of a sudden the fish are acting like they would if you weren't there it's totally uh different. if yeah if, if you're if you're blowing bubbles you i remember once when i was a kid I, when that first got me interested in rebreathers there was a a guy talking about his first experience on the rebreather and it always stuck with me is that he was saying like if you can imagine you're like a wildlife photographer in, in the in you know Africa or something, uh, and compare like a normal photographer who's out there by himself, quiet in the woods, you know, with a shade or, or whatever, like hi or a, a hutch hiding, versus a photographer with a helicopter over his head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and and it, it is that dramatic. It, it's the way I see it, it. It it feels like it's that dramatic. Yeah. So for example, with you know even fun stuff like manta rays, they'll just come and stay. They'll just stay over you. They're interested. They're curious, and there's nothing threatening. There's nothing, you know, the big wall of bubbles that changes. So sharks, all that stuff, act differently. Yeah. Uh, pelagic fish, and then of course, um, you know, fish that I'm interested in, like angels, like large angel fish. I'm interested in their natural behavior. So by having the rebreather, I can just remain uh, completely, you know, hidden uh, and watch the behavior. And you know, I don't collect big angels very often. I have a couple of pairs here that I'm working on to try and breed. And obviously, I, I need to know that they're a male and a female, not just maybe a two males sparring or, or whatever, two females feeding together rather yeah, than right. an actual pair. So I'll spend an hour just watching them, you know, waiting, wow. waiting. And then I'll see, I'll see from the behavior that the male's courting the female. And I can tell, okay, these are an active pair. They're, they're a, you know, a, a pair that's actively reproducing, but I also don't want them too old. So there's all these. Yeah. criteria that i don't want to that i use but i want to decide down there when i see it so that's why it's such a, a bonus because i can just sit there and and check yeah. them out till i'm yeah till I make up my mind mm. oh that's a, <clears> yeah that, that's I didn't incredible think about that you know the, and yeah <laughs> you, you're not on that rough race against time that uh, exactly uh, oh it changes everything because yeah. And you're not you're not making silly mistakes and and you know yeah. exactly the race against time. That I hate that now. Like I get on open circuit <laughs> and I'm, I'm terrible. I I'm just frustrated. I just, I'm looking at why am I worried about how much air I've got? That should yeah. be because normally the last thing on your mind. You know you've got ample air and you've got a bailout. So I actually yeah. feel uh, less safe now when I do an open circuit dive. I I'm worried because yeah. I don't have a, a redundancy. You know I don't have yeah. one because we're on the rebreather. We have a separate you know bottle for bailout. bailout. Yeah um and and now i'm back to you know i've been learning side mount and yeah. i i have a new uh um dive officer he was a guide at one of the dive shops and we took him on board obviously because there's there's no work in that regard and he's really good instructor really good diver and just uh really uh helpful good to have around yeah. and he's been telling me you know you need to try side, side mount because one of the dives that i'm doing where the rebreather isn't really good for is is when i'm collecting the eggs so, so yeah. when you have the spawning aggregation you want to be able to move fast, you know, through the water yeah, and, yeah. and the rebreather is, is very heavy. They're bulky and they, they yeah. slow you down significantly. 
and yeah. he's telling me try side mount try side mount so finally i was like all right you know i'll try yeah, this yeah. you know crazy new tech you know whatever design and I got to say, for for pelagic swimming and for trying to move fast, it's it's amazing. It's it's yeah. um, I I had never really considered the freedom that that having it on the side, the freedom it gives you in your torso to yeah. to build into your swimming. You know, so all of a sudden you're swimming like you would without a tank, obviously, because it's on the yeah. side. Um, and we're even to the point now where uh, when I'm going to get eggs, I'll go in with a, an 80, like a regular big tank on one side and then i'll carry a 40 a small tank on the other side yeah. and i'll dive the 80 until the spawning starts and i'm ready to go and then i'll just hand my uh, my dive officer the the 80 and then i'll just right. swim off with the 40 and i'm, I'm sprinting you know like it's yeah, so wow. much faster and then i can get the egg straight away and, and it, it yeah it makes a yeah. big difference for that so wow. yeah try side mount <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you, i mean yeah. if you have it have it yeah <laughs> and it's the J, the J, I remember asking you once, I think, that you're on the J, <clears throat> yeah, JJ, 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 CCR, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're pretty amazing units that kind of renowned for being just uh, good all rounders. They, they're sort of technical BCD, but you can adapt them and change them. Like I've modified mine heavily and I, I love yeah, it right. now. I've got it worked out where I just, I feel better in that than any other underwater gear. Like, absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. The electronics on the JJ are amazing. And so a lot of the, the other units that I'm interested in, they don't have the same kind of um, computer operating system. So it might either be a manual, you know, O2 ad or, or other options yeah. um, or other. But Shearwater is the computer we use, but it's also with an electronic system with a solenoid. So it's full, uh, you know, yeah. automatic uh, operation and, uh, you know, Maybe one in thirty dives, I might have a problem where I have to abort the dive, but that's standard anyway. That that happens on open circuit for work diving anyway. You might yeah. you might blow a hose or, or whatever things where you have to bail out. So um, overall, it's just been a, a pleasure. It's a, it's a such yeah. a great machine. It's, it doesn't fail. Um, it's yeah. intimidating as hell when you start. It really is. It's it's scary. Yeah. It's like I'm on the same air and I'm. You know, is the sorb working? And you know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it is intimidating. But but once you you know you get I don't know maybe a hundred hours, you, you need to put the time in. You have to you have to get to know the unit. And you know you have all these fancy computers, but really, uh, the thing that I'm, I'm always listening for my solenoid, and I I know the rhythm that the solenoid should be firing, and I know like if I swim hard, it's going to increase, and I'm yeah, I'm always yeah. listening to that beat of the solenoid. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's a uh, important one for me. But obviously, you have a heads up and, and a good computer as well. And, yeah. Uh, and as I do dive because it's work uh, diving. I, I made it a policy within Biota that we, especially with tech diving, that I, I have a, a dive safety guy, and, and he's literally there just for my safety. That's so I'll be wow. collecting. He's not collecting. He, he's watching. He's carrying the extra bailout and the collecting equipment. But his job is to watch me uh, and really. Uh, it's not even that high risk. I just, I guess I've lost a few friends and, and that, that is on your mind, but at the same point, it just makes sense. You know, like if, yeah. if something goes wrong to you when you, with you, when you're diving, especially if it's a stroke or a, a blackout or something that, you know, you're unconscious, if, if you have a diver with you, you probably will survive. If, if yeah. you don't have a diver with you, you probably won't, you know, that, that yeah, enough yeah. is like that alone. It just removes the chances of, of, of dying significantly to, you know, that's not to say I don't solo dive. But when I'm working diving, it's it's with a with a dive safety. I, I just I've I've taken too many risks and, and you know it's, it's come close a few times and I just realized I I need to have a dedicated guy. It makes sense. Yeah.